You know, when He created us, He gave us the freedom of choice. Why? Because He wanted to live as a man. If we live like an animal, then maybe we don't have to suffer from these kind of diseases. But then we cannot have a happy relationship with God. We will be just like a robot. But, however, God wanted to have a special relationship with us. When a man loves God, he wanted to have a true heart from a man. He wanted to have a relationship with us because he, he wanted to have a love relationship with us because we chose to love him. For example, you know, you're married, you get married, and your husband says, you know what, you're my wife, so you have to do what I tell you to do. Then wife, do you think she's happy? No, she's not going to be happy. The husband as well, the husband is not going to be loved by his wife heartfully. God wanted to be loved by us with all of our heart. That's why he gave us the freedom of choice. No, you know what? Once he gives us the freedom of choice, then you know trouble can be arise. Trouble, trouble can be happened because we can turn away from him. He knew the risk already. When he created a man, he created us to give love because God is love. Because God is love. He knows that he is going to be happy when he shares, when he gives the love to a man. Let's say I am love, I have full love, love in my heart, but that I don't want to share, so I'm not going to create anybody. Then you know God is not love. If God is love, he wants to share that love with people. To give those people, he had to create it. He had to create an object to give love. It's like the same way with a man and a woman. You know, when a man and a woman love each other, you know, then they also want to have someone else to give love. That's very natural. Now these days, people don't want to give love because they don't know the, they don't know the joy when they share love. So they don't want to have babies. You know, creation can happen where, when there is love. Now, when we say God is our creator, it means God is love. Now, God is love, it means God has to be love. So, God is our creator, it means God is love. Now, what kind of love is that? That love gives us the freedom of choice. Now, if he gives us the freedom of choice, then he knows what's going to happen in the future. What is that? Because he opened these possibilities for us not to choose him. It means we are going to get sick. So he took the chance. He took a chance. Even though he knew the risk, he created us and gave us the freedom of choice. So when he created human, he was ready for trouble. 
You know, many people when they get sick, they say, "Oh, how come I'm sick?" And you know, why he troubles me? Things like that. He doesn't know the truth. Now God already knew that I we might suffer from diseases. So God really wanted us. Not to get sick, but if we get sick, he really wanted us to turn to him, so that we will give our turned-off genes to God, and so that God can restore our turned-off genes to restore. You know, love gives us the freedom of choice, but then love. Is responsible for the result. No, I say I love you, but I I'm not responsible for you. You know, love is responsible until the end. Now you start program. You start pra practicing. You start will tell you this kind of truth. Through this program, you know that God is going to be responsible for you if you decided to turn back to God. You know that God is going to be responsible for you and your disease. You know what? Because God is love, this is so natural for Him to be responsible for us. You know what? There's another reason. Why God should be res responsible for you? Because God gave us the freedom of choice. If He didn't give us the freedom of choice, we might not get sick. But then He gave us the freedom of choice. So you know, it means God let us have cancer. So you know what? That's why God is responsible for that. Because I gave you the freedom of choice, you got sick, so I am responsible for your disease. That is our God. You know, our love in this world is totally different from God's love. You know, sometimes we project our love into God's love. But then that's not right. For example, Americans love toward their children and Koreans love toward their children are different. Parents' love toward their children are very strong, very strong. Loving their children in American way and Korean way, they're different. Now, what is American way? They say they love their children. They said, because I love you, I give you the choice. I give you the freedom of choice. American parents never push their kids to go to you know, for example, you go to, you should go to the law, you should go to the law, you should go to law school, you should go to medical school, you should be uh, uh, this certain person. Parents never push their children to become something. Maybe they can suggest. But at the end, you know, sometimes American parents say, well, I want you to be a lawyer, but you know what? You should make the choice. So always American parents give their children a freedom of choice. So American parents, they say, American parents, they say, you know what? You're responsible for your choice. They always say, because I gave you the freedom of choice, you're responsible for your choice. You know, well, American parents give their kids 
the freedom of choice, that's very similar to God's love. But then they don't they are not responsible for their children's choice, then that's you know, not like God's love. Now Korean parents they don't give their kids the freedom of choice. But because they don't give the freedom of choice, they're responsible for their children's choice. Totally opposite from American parents. What I learned from the Bible, God's love took all the good points from American parents plus Korean parents. God gives us the freedom of choice and he's also responsible for the result. That is God's love. Isn't that wonderful? That kind of love. When I just think of it, oh, you know, that can be the spark. That is so wonderful and beautiful, and I become so thankful. I'm so thankful because I get the freedom of choice. If, you know, and even though I made a wrong choice and I got the wrong result, but then God is still responsible for my choice. That's a true love. That is true love, and that is goodness, and that is the beauty. So God's love is the spark. Our genes are turned off, and our genes function with that power, with that love. That's how our genes are programmed. And that's why only God's love can restore our genes. Very clear, you know. Now, I hope that you understand the bigger picture, bigger frame, bigger picture of love this evening. Now, the cross, the cross of Jesus shows how much God loves us simply. You know, they say, we sinned. What does that mean? It means we denied the love. We didn't choose God. We chose different thing. Even though God's love is the true and the goodness and the beauty, but that we didn't choose that, that means there is death. We go toward the death. You know, the Bible says, do not worship the idol. You know, it means, you know, whatever you want to do in your life, that's fine. But, but I really pray that you live with the love of God because that's the most important thing. You can do whatever you want to do, but this love, my love to you, the spark, the love that I give to you is the best. So I really hope you choose this. If something exists, is something you think it's better or more important than my love, then that is going to be an idol. Let's say we work very hard to make money. You overwork, you know, you overload yourself to make money. You work until 4 a.m. in the morning and things like that. That what is more important? Money is more important than your life. You know, many Korean Americans, they do it. 
they work very hard to make money. Now, let's say, you know, those Koreans, you know, they emigrated to America and they say, uh, what can we do? What can we do? And they decided to do laundry. Well, you know, if they have money, they can actually run this laundry business. You know, if they run the laundry business, they have to succeed. If you fail in America, you know, you know, you lose everything. So they work really hard. You know, inside of that laundry room, all the chemical, all the chemicals and the dust, you know, the air is really bad. They never hire people, you know, husband and wife, they only work. So, you know, they make money. And, you know, as they save their money, you know, they're very happy. Then, you know, they buy another laundry house and then they go this way and that way, that laundry and this laundry room. So, you know, they have no time even to eat. Now, they lose their health, you know, and also when they report their tax, you know, they have to, you know, lie a little bit to RRS and things like that. Now, they're living on the opposite side of the beauty. They sacrifice their life. Instead of the beauty and the truth and the goodness, money is more important than what is the idol. Yes, money is the idol. When something becomes more important than life, then that something becomes your idol. You should live in the love of God. That's why God says, do not worship idols. So the life in New Start it means we have to restore the most important thing in life. That is New Start life. Now when you have a relationship in families, your pride is not important. You need to love each other. That should be the most important factor. If you live in love, that is the new start. That is the life in new start. Now, God's love is recorded in the Bible. So as you read the Bible, instead of feeling God's love, but if you only fear God, if you're only afraid of God, then you are misunderstanding God. Love above all is God. You know, there are many Christians in this world. Many people say God is love. But then they don't really know if you ask him, what is God's love specifically? Now, you need to understand God's love specifically. And as you do so, when you're impressed, when you're touched by that love, then your genes will receive the spark. Of course, the beautiful nature, the ocean, the mountains. For example, you know the Yosemite waterfall. When you look at the Yosemite waterfall, wow, so beautiful. You know, God showed his artistic skill through that waterfall. When you feel that the waterfall is beautiful, then you are praising God's wonderful work. When you feel that wonderful, you feel that wonderfulness, 
you are thankful. When you feel that beauty, now you say, wow, what a wonderful waterfall. Well, that is good. But what is better for your genes? You have to see the beyond. Wow. You know, I went to Mountain Gumgang in North, um, North Korea. That was beautiful. I love Sorang Mountain, of course, in Korea. When I go to Sorang Mountain, there are many valleys. All different kinds of valleys. Baekdam Valley and Cheonbuldong Valley. Many valleys. Twelve Angels Valley. Very beautiful. Very wonderful. I think Cheonbuldong Valley is the most beautiful. You know, Rocky Mountain, you know, like great. You know, when Koreans go to Can I mean Rocky Mountain in Canada, they're like, wow, they're amazed. But when you go to Cheonbuldong Valley, you feel like, yeah, wow. This kind of feeling. You know, yeah, I express freely, right? Because my heart is free. I can express what I want to express. <coughs> you know that crazy guy? His <laughs> expression is like that. It's a crazy action, right? <laughs> and your expression is, <laughs> you know, this way. Everybody has different way of expressions. You know, our expression muscles are well created. You know, I really hope you use these expression muscles on your face. Good expression, thankful expressions, beautiful expressions. I really hope you use these muscles that God created for you. You know, when you go to Cheonbuldong Valley, so beautiful. The place like that, I went there four years ago, but when I talk about this Cheonbuldong Valley, my genes are turned on because the beautiful scenes I can recall again. Even though it has been four years, it can last like 10 years and 40 years. The power of beauty continues. It lasts forever. Even though I'm not in that valley, I can feel the power. It's like love. It's like love. When you love someone so much, for example, I was loved by my grandmother. I was the first grandson. So my grandmother loved me so much. Now my grandmother passed away. Now it's been 40 years, more than 40 years. Now, but when I think of my grandmother, even though she's in the grave now, she lies in the grave, but the love of my grandmother influences me. The love is alive. <laughs> the love of my grandmother still remains in me. So the love, the true love is so valuable. So the true love is priceless. Nothing is going to be more important than true love. Live with this philosophy. Uh, 
you know, when you when you go to America, you know, waterfalls are like a great big. But when you go to Cheonbuldong Valley, waterfalls are you know little and cute and nice. Look at the waterfall. You know, there there are Yangpok waterfall, two waterfalls. Those two story waterfall, very little. So beautiful. So neat. It's called Yangpok. Of course, if you say, oh, the waterfall is beautiful, of course, it's okay there. Some people say, oh, my, oh, oh, that's a waterfall there. Oh, okay, woo. Difficult, woo. Walking. Some people say that. They just pass by the waterfall. <laughs> they don't have time to enjoy, appreciate the beautiful waterfall. <laughs> the deeper you see, you will have <laughs> life. <laughs> I think this place is wonderful <laughs> because you guys can laugh that hard even though you have that, you know, serious sickness. It's a wonderful place. You know, you're, I am in front of you guys and you are, you know, very sick, but you guys are laughing, dying laughing. This is so wonderful. This is a beautiful thing. I think God is a very wonderful designer. Wow, God designs that, you know, wonderful <laughs> waterfall. Do you remember this? Do you remember this? <laughs> flower, yes, kanna, flower. Oh, God designs that wonderful flower. God is wonderful. God is a wonderful artist. He created those things to turn on my genes. He created those things to give me the spark. He expresses specifically to give us love. You know, he, he cut those rocks and then he, you know, flows the water there. Sang Lee, Sang Lee, I love you. See my love. That is waterfall. That's the sea we looked at today. If you, s if you say that, oh, look at the sea, hmm, okay, that's the sea, huh? You have to feel the beauty. You have to feel the love of God. Sang Lee, I love you. Then in your heart, you answer, God, thank you for the beautiful sea. Let's live like this way. Let's live our lives this way. Then you can live with full of energy. You can feel the full spark in you. You know, many people didn't know God's love. If you don't know this kind of love, even though you've been to church for many years, that's for nothing. That's nothing. The Bible specifically expresses God's love, not only philosophically, you know, I love the book of Buddha. I studied those books of Buddha. It's very nice. They're all nice. They're more like um, abstract and um, they're kind of vague. But the Bible, 
is very specific. So sometimes it's quite childish. If it's too specific, you know, it's a little bit childish. I was thinking back in old time, hmm, the Bible is so childish. I wanted something, you know, something graceful, you know, things like, you know, the Bible says you ate the apple or not, you know, that's kind of childish. But that expression explains the higher level of knowledge, wisdom into the lower level of things. So I was thinking, hmm, so those childish things are the very super level. You know, if you are childish, that is, that love is very real. Even though you love someone very much, but then if you don't express in an easy way, you know, that's not real love. You know, for example, king and queen's love. Especially in Korean traditional way. You know, if the king wants to sleep with the queen, they need process. You know, king has to tell all the servants and he has to wear specific clothes to get into the queen's room. This is only, you know, in Korean way. You know, he can't do whatever he wants to do. <laughs> you know, he has to follow a certain rule. I'm sorry to tell you, mister. Quinn, please take <laughs> off your clothes. That's not interesting. This love is not interesting. When you love someone, even though you're a king, you have to be playful. Like, give me a kiss, Quinn. You know, things like that. You know, that's, that's an interesting, cute love, you know. <laughs> and then the king, you know, hugs this queen and the queen says, oh, my <laughs> majesty. <laughs> you know, it's not, <laughs> it's not really real <laughs> love. <laughs> what I realized, <laughs> hmm, okay, <it's> childish <laughs> thing <laughs> is <laughs> the real <laughs> thing. <laughs> I think it's going to be my proverbs. <laughs> so childish <laughs> things <laughs> and those real things are the same. The Bible expresses in a childish way to, ex to explain the super higher level of stories. Now, even though you think it's childish, but find the super high level of meaning in the Bible. Now let's find these things in the Bible. Genesis. Genesis chapter 2. The Lord God formed men of the dust of the ground. The Lord God formed men of the dust. Why? To give love. He really wanted to give love. And I mean, he created a man from the dust. If you don't think this way, well, God created a man from the dust, then that can be only childish. But if you focus on love, Oh, he really wanted to give his love. So he molded this dust to create a man. So he formed a man of the dust. Even from this one verse, one line, you can feel the grace of God. 
Please don't read God form the man of the dust. Yeah, it, it, it shouldn't be this way. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Oh, so graceful. Oh, he's full of love. He really wanted to give his love. He even created a man from the dust. And then he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Man became a living being. Let's look at the different translation. This is Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Here this version says, Man became a living creature. Now let's go back to the original verse, version. He breathed into nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. Now here you see the breath of life where? Into his nostrils. Isn't this childish? Into his nostrils? If you think this is just childish, you know, it's like he's just praying, playing. You know, he formed a man and he looked at the nostril and... <laughs> it's like he's playing. And then man became a living being. It's like God is playing. Now, if you read this with full of love, now to make this dust to be a living being, then he has to breathe his breath of life into the nostril. Now here, breathe into what does that mean? This this breath, breath of life came from the mouth. Then where did it come from? Mouth means inside of God. So the this breath of life, yes, the source, the place, the original place is God's inside. Inside of God, he had the breath of life. And then through his mouth, he breathed into his nostrils. Now, our meaning is inside. Now, those meanings came out of your mouth, but those meanings can be words. Those meanings, if those meanings are specifically expressed, we call these words. So, inside of God's love, came out of his mouth in a shape of love, in a shape of words, and he said, Adam, sing me, let us live together. Now John understood this. Now the breath of life is the word, and then the word is life. Now John disciple John understood this. Now John in chapter 1 there it says in him was life and the life was the light of men. Now so those disciples understood. Now he said he breathed into his nostrils. It means God gave life into man's 
inside of body. To get into the inside of body, he had to breathe into his nostrils. It's kind of childish, but if you understand clearly, that is so loving. That's the extreme expression of love. As I read this Bible verse, I become so thankful. You know, God formed man of the dust. If God were sangly, me, now, you know, I have to make him alive. Then I will get some roots, medical, you know, herbs, and some fruits. I'll make the juice out of it. And I will open his mouth and I will drop some of these, you know, medic medicine, things like that. And then, you know, those dust became a man. Now, is this better or would you like to be the first case that from the love of God came into our body and you became a man? Which way do you like the most? Now, let's say you go to the seashore and you got the sand and some herbs together and you grind them and you, you know, put those pad on the forehead. Now you become alive. That's kind of childish. But that's what Jesus did to the blind man. Now love is life. It's not like the material things. People don't live because Jesus put the pad on its forehead, but because of the love inside of God. When those love comes into our body, then we become a living being. That's how God explains. That's a great story. It's not just a plane. You know, we learned the genes. Now you understand the story. If you learn about New Start, if you learn about the genes, when you read the Bible, it's going to be a totally different experience. Now, he said he breathed into his nostrils. Well, to me, this is very meaningful. You know, I have two daughters. I have two daughters. I had two daughters, like one year apart, and I have a son five years apart. My youngest son is 33 years old. You know, my son was the youngest, so he was so cute, adorable. So when I was in the hospital, I wanted to play with my little boy. So, you know, I was imagining, and I was waiting for his, you know, call. I was thinking of my son, and I was so happy. You know, on Mondays and Tuesdays, I worked until 5. And Thursday and Fridays as well. But Wednesday, I only worked in the morning. So Wednesday afternoon, I can play with my little boy. So that was Wednesday. After I finished my round, I was driving home. And I was imagining, I was thinking, my son coming out of the door, Daddy! You know, I got home, but, you know, strangely, he didn't show up. So I went in, and he was snoring, sleeping. He was taking a nap. You know, I couldn't wake him up because I love him. I couldn't wake him up. But I wanted to wake him up. When God formed Adam, oh, do you know how much he wanted to wake him up? He 
he was badly, he really wanted to wake him up. As possible as he could, he wanted to wake him up. But then, you know, he couldn't wake him, wake him up. Well, me, I was waiting for my son. I was watching my son. And my son was like, you know... So I was watching. Ah, he's going to wake up. Do you know what I did? So I did this. I breathed around his nose. <laughs> and then he was like, ah, you know. Ticklish, ticklish, tinglish. You know, he was almost, you know, up. But then he didn't wake up. You know, I couldn't shake him to wake up. So I did it again. And then my son was like a little bit ticklish. And he opened his eyes a little bit. So I breathed again <laughs> onto his eyes. And he opened his eyes and he said, Daddy! Ah, uh, that is this moment, the Genesis that I just read. This is that moment. Now Adam woke up. Adam saw God's face. God! With love, read the Bible. And this Bible is going to be a living power on you. Even though the expression looks like, seems like childish, but you can experience the extreme love of God, wonderful love of God. So the Bible explains the relationship between God and man. Not like authoritarianism Bible. The Bible can be so gentle, so neat and cute. This Bible explains this kind of relationship between man and God. Now, it's not like, well, I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to make this man alive. It's not like that. God is not that kind of God. Now, I'm going to breathe into your nostrils. It's not like that. You and me, just two of us, you know, that kind of relationship. If you start to understand this kind of God, you will realize the creator of this universe and then you become a very wonderful person as well because you want to be like God. And you can be generous to everybody. You can have forgiving eyes because you are not going to be stressed when you are doing this, right? You, then you can protect your genes. So the Bible says, Jesus said, I will give you the new commandment, love each other. Not with your love, with God's love, love each other. Then even though you suffer in this world, you can turn this world into heaven. I know you're suffering during in this hour, but in your personal relationship with God, I pray that you can have heaven in your life.
loving Father. Our love between you and me is childish, but this is so wonderful and extremely wonderful. We have misunderstood your great love. Father, your love is the most wonderful love. That mo most wonderful love we need, Father. You are so wonderful and you meet us in any situation. Father, through the word of God, we want to understand you deeply. Please help us. When we understand your deeper love, help us to realize that those love, those power of love will be the spark on our genes. Tonight, I want to, we want to understand your soft, gentle, sweet love. And we want to have a good night's rest. Please help us to rest. And as we feel your gentle love in our rest, please touch our turned off genes and damaged genes and restore those genes. Pray these things in Jesus name. Amen. Now, encourage each other. Have a good night. And please restore well through this night. <laughs>